together here to sit and to crack With our glasses in our hands and our work upon our back This day a trade among them that could mend or could pack If it wasn't for the work of the weavers If it wasn't for the weavers, what would you do? You wouldn't have a cloth that's made of wool You wouldn't have a coat of the black or the blue If it wasn't for the work of the weavers Oh, the noise is true. Well, I mean, you, you just used to lip read. You had to learn how to lip read. And you couldn't hear one another above the noises. And uh, if you wanted somebody, you used to just look, wave to them and then they'd look at you. And you did that follow your lips. When I started work at the mill, the office was uh, way back in the Victorian era with high desks, high stools, all male, and uh, letters were uh, handwritten, no typewriters. The grandfather actually, his main job was looking after the horses. He came from Padbury during the Great Strike and they hadn't a lot of work down south and when they heard that there was all these jobs going in the mill, he thought I'll do that. Each bale of wool in the warehouse has a sample removed. The sample is then taken to the wool office where it is checked for quality and properties. The younger members of the Worlds and Walker family were employed in the business. The practice was to put their uh, ch children through the mill to see and learn all the processes so they were very knowledgeable about the textile industry when they came to our more senior jobs and become directors of the firm. Clement Goldsborough. He started in 1926 uh, when it was a general strike and they were wanting somebody to take a lorry down to the docks in London. And he said he would take and so when he came out, they said, well, there's a job for you. And he became transport manager and retired in 65. The wool has been very tightly compressed during transit. Now it must be expanded before it can be processed. The first stage of processing is called scouring. The fork loose stock scouring machine shown on the 1932 film was in actual fact still in the dye house when I came here in 1964 and one gentleman ran the machine himself fed on at one end at the other end and it just flopped into a cart. Scouring of course is to just clean the wool get all the grease out I mean it sounds silly but you get the grease out the lanolin out and then of course it's replaced with grease in the blending to make the fibres spin. Not all wool has the same properties and in order to produce a range of finished products different wools are mixed in varying proportions to produce yarns with predetermined properties. These may vary from a hard wearing low cost yarn to one having a very soft and luxurious feel. This mixing process is called blending and initial mix is done manually before the wool is then fed into the Fearnaught mechanical blender which will complete the process. The door of the machine is normally closed but it has been removed in this shot so that the action can be recorded on film.
was a member of the uh, <laughs> textile club because I worked in textiles and I, to be a member of that club you had to be a member of the textile union. Now I went in one night and she was in with the sisters, I found out she worked here and that's how we met and got married. 1951. 1951. The process of yarn formation begins when the newly scoured wool, still tangled like freshly washed hair, is given an initial combing, sometimes called willying, before being then passed on to the carding process. Carding involves combing the wool into progressively finer threads. The first stage is called scribbling, and after this is completed, the wool is deposited into a weighing hopper. The setting at which the hopper tips will determine the thickness of the final yarn. Still only part finished, the yarn is transferred at right angles from the scribbler into the carder by means of this mechanism called a scotch feed. This change of direction ensures that any linear pattern that may have developed in the scribbler can be effectively broken up and eliminated, thereby producing a yarn of uniform quality and colour. At the end of the carding process, the partially formed yarn is wound onto condenser bobbins prior to spinning. Just look at the skill that allows the new bobbin to be started without interfering with the speed of the machine. The yarn is then drawn and spun on a multi-spindle unit known as a spinning mule. It was quite usual for as many as three generations of the same family to work in the same mill, often for many years. But in 1932, Wormel and Walkers claimed a record which surely can never have been equalled. The man in the middle of the picture with a beard must have been, well, that was taken, 90 years of age. He had worked at the mill for 76 years, uh, man and boy, and he uh, was awarded a medal from the Yorkshire Post for having worked for a, one firm for the longest period of anybody in Yorkshire. The warp, which is the thread running the length of the workpiece, is fed through a liquid size, which gives it a smooth coating before winding onto back beams and then onto the weaver's beam. The steady process of winding from one beam to another ensures that the yarn is distributed evenly across the weaver's beam and unrolls smoothly during weaving. There are two basic types of loom. The Jacquard loom, named after its French inventor in 1805, is used to produce the most complex patterns. It's controlled by punch cards. One line on a punch card corresponds to a line of weft, which is the thread that runs across the cloth. And enough cards are strung together in an endless chain to cover the entire pattern. The women who operate the jacquard looms are the most skilled weavers in the mill. For a plain cloth or a simple cross stripes, a dob cross loom is used. 
these blankets with their complex patterns have been produced on jacquard looms. And this simpler pattern has come from a dob cross loom. Women who worked in the mill worked the 55 hours, but then they went home, uh, cooked for the family, looked after the family, and families in those days were bigger. Up every morning at five, it's a wonder that we're still alive. Stretching and yawning in this cold morning, it's back to the dreary old drive. And it's poverty, poverty, not the loom it is saying all day. Poverty, poverty, not gaffers to skinny to pay. Poverty, poverty, not all as one eye on the clock, and I know I can go up when I hear me shuffle. No poverty, poverty, no. My first job was in the, the weaving shed, which I didn't like, because it was too noisy. So uh, I asked if I could have a transfer. They said, well, where would you like to work? I said, canteen. But that's how I met my husband. Because he worked in Woolly Place and I were at canteen, you see, and he used to come in for his dinner, so I used to give him extra cool potatoes. A mill as large as this one has a massive demand for power to drive the machinery. The power is supplied by steam from these boilers, feeding the single engine, which in turn then powers the whole mill through a series of overhead pulleys and belts. We had four looms and we were on peaks. We've had to hand our money then eventually. I remember one day when I was weaving, I got this bang on my head and it was shuttle come out from another loom. It came right on the side of my head. I saw if I had to come in the point, I'd have kill me. Sometimes a shuttle flies out and gives some poor weaver a cloud. There she lies bleeding with nobody heeding and no one to carry her out. And it's poverty, poverty, not the loom it is saying all day. Poverty, poverty, not gaffers to skinny to pay. Poverty, poverty, not. All is one eye on the clock, and I know I can go up when I hear me shuffle. No poverty, poverty, no. Then we used to run little sixpenny clubs, you know. Save sixpence a week for Christmas, every week for Christmas. What we call Dibblums. Oh dear, I'm going to be late. Gaffer is stood on the gate. I'll be out of pocket. The wages he'll dock it. I'll have to buy bread on the slate. And it's poverty, poverty, not the loom it is saying all day. Poverty, poverty, not gaffers to skinny to pay. Poverty, poverty, not all is one eye on the clock, and I know I can go up when I hear me shuffle. No poverty, poverty, not. Like a lot of the firms in those days, we had housing for some of our employees. We had 40 houses on West Vale, 
and we had uh, a row of houses which were for managers and senior managers on Island View. The smaller ones being first and then gradually getting bigger and going up to a four bedroomed house at the end where the engineer lived so that he was on hand when he was required if something broke down in the mill. The mill engineer was expected to maintain all the equipment as well as deal with most emergencies. To do this he required heavy machinery, a comprehensive workshop and the skilled personnel to undertake any task they were called upon to do. You know, we used to get a five pound a week and one pound fifty had to go for shooting, for choosing, for clothing. You were okay. After weaving, the blankets may pass through any of a variety of finishing processes. These include souring, which is a process of dyeing, felting, which thickens the blanket. The operator is feeling for the joining, which comes round more frequently as the cloth shrinks, and the use of fulling hammers to produce a heavier blanket. Each warp would make 25 blankets. 25 blankets was chosen because that was the weight that a person could carry and we didn't have conveyors and trucks and so on in the, uh, those days and so it had to be something that a man could carry over his shoulder. The tenter field, which is opposite to the mill, was where we had frames uh, blankets were taken out there as pieces, 25 blankets long, and hung on the tenter frame on tenter hooks, and then clipped to the bottom frame and stretched so that uh, the blankets were dried uh, the required width. You would realise that drying blankets out in the open is very difficult in our climate. With we uh, then bought. Uh, tentering machines, large machines, the blankets were fed in as a piece and layered there and dried in the steam. Blankets were allowed to be sold with up to 15% of moisture, so they were taken on to Radcliffe Mills uh, where a cellar was, had been made, where the blankets were hung up in the cellar and uh, water sprayed on the floor so that they could naturally absorb the required amount of moisture before they were sold. If you were going home just about the same time and everybody was coming out of work, the number of people, the road was just full of people all going. And the buses were absolutely chockable. But for some employees, the attractions of the White Heart were just too strong to resist. Just after the war, there was a very disastrous flood. It was so high that it uh, was over the top of the wall opposite to the mill building. Old people were brought out by bringing a boat along to the White Heart. The young people walked on top of the gate and walked along the top of the wall and got out of the mill that way. Teasels such as these are members of the thistle family of plants. They are an essential part of the blanket finishing process. Mounted in large rollers, they used to brush the moistened wool in a very gentle way to bring up the pile or nap, which gives it a softer feel. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would you do? You wouldn't have a cloth that's made of wool. You wouldn't have a coat of the black or the blue. If it wasn't for the work of the weavers. There's some folks independent 
of other tradesmen's work. All women need no barber, and bankers need no clerk. But not a one of them but needs a coat and sight. They all need the work of the weavers. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would you do? They wouldn't have a cloth that's made of wool. They wouldn't have a coat of the black or the blue. If it wasn't for the work of the weavers. Soldiers, the sailors, there's laziers and all. There's doctors and there's ministers and them that live by law. And our friends in South America, though them we never saw. But we know they wear the work of the weavers. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would you do? You wouldn't have a club that's made of a wool. You wouldn't have a coat of the black or the blue. If it wasn't for the work of the weavers. For a different finish, some of the blankets are fed through the vibrating head of a gig mill. The resulting raised nap is very visible in this shot. Each mill would have its traditional annual gala day and it would inevitably be opened by a speech, in this case by T.M. Wormald, the chairman before everyone could relax and enjoy all the fun of the fair. The year that I participated, I was an Amazon on a float going all through town. We had Stone Age and had made a paper mache dinosaur. At the bottom of Webster Hill, it fell off and it took ten men to lift it back out of wine. And it was a beautiful sports field, it really was. And all around the edge of the sports field there was uh, horse chestnut trees. Well, I came to work here when I was 18 years old uh, to play in the cricket team. And we played all over Huddersfield, Leeds, Bradford. And I was a fast bowler. And I was known as, uh, you used to call me, Jean Truman Walker. Lovely very, memory. Really, yes. really love her. Mm. Especially at Christmas times. The word dances, yes, the word right. party. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would you do? You wouldn't have a club that's made of a wool. You wouldn't have a boat of the black or the blue. If it wasn't for the work of the weavers. If it wasn't for the weavers, what would you do? You wouldn't have a club that's made of wool. You wouldn't have a coat of the black or the blue. If it wasn't for the work of the weavers. After separating, the blankets are bound or whipped. The foreman of the machining department, Charlie Marshall. One day we hadn't much work and he, he wanted to look at some embroidery I were doing. So he looked at the top and he turned it over. Mm, very nice. He says, you'll go upstairs, you can do the binding department. The more expensive ones are bound using satin to increase that feeling of luxury. I started in here in 1956. I started whipping and then I got on to the cabin. You might know them as brand labels now, but we call them cabin. Others have the woolen edge turned in and secured with a simple blanket stitch. The women can easily keep the sewing machines operating at full speed 
through their skillful handling of the bulky blankets. When it was his turn to be on night watch, he used to fire the uh, 10 o'clock gun. They fired it exactly on 10 o'clock every single night. And Mr. Wormald, who at that time lived up in Breesfield, used to listen for it. And if he heard the gun, he then knew that the night watchman had been round, locked everywhere, checked all the doors, made sure everything was okay, and he could then settle for his evening without worrying. And if you were out walking and you saw anyone walking towards you, they might say, uh, do you know what time it is? Has the gun gone? Have you had 10 o'clock gun? And people used to listen for it and they used to set the clocks by it. The final brush on striking the stripes before storing prior to dispatch. When he died, he was the first man to be, for my grandma to receive some insurance money because the workers weren't insured like they are today. And the wormers and walkers, in fact, everybody was very excited because it was such a good deal, it was such a change for everybody. Not only did they insure everybody, but they started getting two weeks paid holiday. This unusual satin-bound double-sided blanket is carefully brushed before folding into tissue paper. It will later be packed into a wooden crate for maximum protection during transport. The less expensive blankets will be squeezed in a hydraulic press to reduce the shipping bulk and therefore the shipping cost. When we were, we were getting ready to get married and my dad had gone round looking for with us for houses. Oh, you don't want that, you know what dads are like. Oh, you, you don't want that. Anyway, we saw this one at, at Healy. I said, I like that, Dan. He says, well, I'm sorry, love. He says, that I can't, you know, lend you so much a deposit. And you know what? PJ Walker lent me that money to pay five bob a week back both of oh, us yes. while it was paid off. But we wouldn't have had our house if it, if it hadn't been for them. The chairman walked round the factory regularly in order to keep a check on the quality of the blankets being produced. If you were packing a, a bale, you put your hessian on first, you waterproof your brown bed, then you put your blankets in, whatever they were. Then you do the same again on the, the reverse. You put the brown paper, the waterproof and this. Presses were with a 42 pressure, and if you didn't get them right, anything could happen. You used to put big blocks of wood on the top of a board and that pressed them down evenly. And if you didn't get them blocks of wood right, anything could happen. And then it was just a case of stitching them up. There were four men at each corner, just folding them, making a, a loop on for carrying, and then we used to just stitch them up. When they finished, take them out, and then we used to take them to the chap, what weighed them, and mark them. We used to pack bales for South Africa, Canada, America, Southern Rhodesia, when it was Southern Rhodesia, everything under the sun the Chinese wedding blankets, we used to pack them into crates, nail the lid down and bind them with a steel band and then they could be dispatched. Sadly, because of the increasing use of duvets at home, and the combination of protective tariff barriers and lower labour costs elsewhere, the industry has undergone a huge decline since the 1960s, 
although a few very specialised manufacturers still prosper. Yet the legacy of the wealth generated in the heyday of the textile industry is visible in the majestic Victorian buildings that grace the West Riding woollen towns and in the memories of its employees. It was lovely, they were happy years. They did bother about the employees and I'm sure in, in another way back the employees their way of thanking, make sure that the standard, what they were sending out, were good. It was a real happy place. I enjoyed it. I wish I could do it now. Wasn't for the word of the weavers.